are such an asshole. <sighs> All right, last video of the day, and I go on, go on with uh, Red Sings the Blues. Uh, hi, Cappy, new listener here. Attempted completing the form, but received an error message. So trying to reach you here as instructed on your website. I apologize. for I forgot I had this one on my regular email. Here are a few relevant facts about me and my situation. 40 years old, parents and grandparents have passed away. No siblings, no uncles, no aunts, no cousins. Uh, no All right, so you don't even have nephews and nieces. Oh, man, you missed out. They're real cool. <clears throat> I love nephews. They're fun. Single by choice, child free by choice, pet free by choice, no close relationships, pretty much a big tall black pill. So you tune into Thinking Ape, who I like, by the way. Thinking Ape has a great channel. He's a, you could tell he's a linguist because he's very precise in his word choice. Um, minimalist homebody IQ 115. I work remotely for five to 10 hours a week, earn 85,000 per year salary. Where have all the good men gone? You live in a, you work remotely. I'd move out of that state. I don't want to tell where you live. It's not a bad state, but it ain't a great state either. I mean, if you could live anywhere on 85 grand a year, yeah. net worth 1.36 million. The men, where have they gone? The good ones all oh, can't find them. What should I do with my abundance of free time for the next 40 years when nothing holds my interest and keeps me entertained? Interested to hear what you would charge for a YouTube video. Thanks. So, um, all right. Now, this is going to be... Oops, sorry. Uh, this is going to be an increasing question that more and more men and women are going to face. Uh, because, uh, frankly, we've abandoned traditional relationships. We're not going to have families anymore. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, ladies, I have to be perfectly honest. Your predecessors, maybe not you, but your predecessors have certainly proven to be completely irresponsible with the vows of marriage and weddings. And that would be one thing if the guys just got stood up or uh, we broke up hurt feelings. But when it destroys the life and children and alimony and financial ruin. Uh, the, the, they're waking up. Guys are waking up. Now, additionally, men, in fairness, women also don't want to get married. If you look at polling data, women are also not interested in marrying men until they're well into their 30s. So because both men and women are walking away from this market, and that was usually what gave men and women point, purpose, of value, and reason in life, and the uh, commensurate kids that would usually come with it. Everybody, men and women, get to figure out, what do I do with my life? And we've talked about it a little bit before about the menu. You go to a steakhouse, and they're out of steak. That doesn't mean there isn't anything left on the menu. Now, women are way further ahead on this than men are. They've been talking about how they don't need men since about the 60s. Um, there's even what... Not Zarathustra, List Lestrada, some uh, fictional book or world without men. And women have replaced men or come up with their alternative life pursuits aside from you. Yes, Asterisk, they would like to get married, but he better look like Hugh Jackman. And frankly, girls don't want to get married. So let's just go ahead. But, and a lot of the things, why not take a lesson, take a couple pages from their book? All right. Because Every option is on the table. The world is your menu now. So we could kind of maybe see what the girls are doing, what they have been doing and say, okay, maybe we could learn from that. But then I'll go into some other things. But the answer, the short answer is whatever the hell you want, especially you, because you got the money and the, and the freedom. All right. So probably the first thing, the logical thing would be your career. This would apply to most everybody except for you because you're independently wealthy, basically. But the reason you would immediately focus on your career is because there is then no opportunity cost. It only helps and only shores up your finances. It only helps you move towards promotion. It only makes you more financially stable. Further secure, um, secures your retirement. And then on top of it, it does give you something to do. Now, I do not believe you should have value, point, purpose, and reason in life derived from your career, unless it's a very interesting career. 
you know, like maybe you're a surgeon. Okay. Derive some, you're a cop or a firefighter. You save lives. Okay. Derive some value from that. You're a soldier. You're protecting the nation. Derive value from that. But you're a, a project manager or an accountant. No offense, Chad. Or, or um, you know, a, a, you know, an analyst like I was a banker. <clears throat> you, you quickly come to the point that that's just to get money out of. That's really what it is. But that doesn't mean that it's not a good use of your time. Right. So in like, okay, I don't have family. What do I do? Well, how are your finances? Because that'd be the 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 immediate number two thing. Are your finances good? Do you have enough money you can retire? You don't. There's a project, project number one. Unless you're a Democrat and just want to live off of other people and be a a, a vampire sucking blood leech. Other people pay for my stuff. But if you basically don't want to be a thief or a, or a lamprey or a leech, there's always work to do. And until you got your money squared away, keep doing that. Another thing, what do women also do? They also get education. Now, women, no offense, I, I tell you girls this uh, because I care. Let me pull this over here. Women do education like in all all the universe and all the unlimited life forms that exist, women do this. This is the dumbest thing in the universe they do. They do education incredibly stupid by majoring in worthless stuff and paying a quarter million dollars for a worthless degree. <clears throat> when I mean education, once you got your finances squared away, we're talking intellectual stimulation. And you can do that for free. In the before time, they had this things called libraries where you could get the equivalent education that most women get today in college and universities, but without all the debt, but, but with the exact same employment prospects. So you could get the knowledge and the wisdom of a women's studies degree or a sociology degree or a literature degree, just by going to the library with a library card, which I didn't know if you knew this, it was free you get for free. And then be just as employable as somebody with their doctorate in sociology, right? So you you would you could also work as a barista <clears throat> or a bartender or what have you, but you would have the knowledge and the wisdom and the intellectual stimulation. But here's me being the economist for free, okay? So you wouldn't be financially crippled for the rest of your life. Larger point is this: um, I, the the funnest part of my life, and I'm kind of in the same thing because you know the GFA in here. <clears throat> usually on my own work on my own. Um, and when I bachelor it up, whether here or in the Southern command by myself, my favorite part of the day is, uh, right before I go to bed, when I'm listening to podcasts and falling asleep, I actually like sleep. Sleep is the happiest part of the, if like, you're not conscious, eh, I don't know. Kind of, I enjoy sleep. I like sleeping. And I, and right before I just tune into a podcast and relax, or if I'm actually going hiking or something, listening to a podcast, I do that. And the podcast is for intellectual stimulation. And I would say philosophy, and that's the larger part I'm trying to get. It's not education, but getting a good life philosophy, I think is intellectually rewarding, spiritually rewarding. <laughs> and absent of love, it's a study and a love for humanity. That I think is a, it provides a code of ethics. And so I would strongly recommend, well, one, I'd recommend you pick up Turd Flinging Monkey's book, The Way of Monkey book. You absolutely need to get, you the client. I don't know about everybody else. I think everybody should read it. Yes, go get a copy, help out Turd Flinging Monkey. But it is a very good book about, okay, what do you do in a world where the opposite sex essentially wants nothing to do with you? And there's other life, you know, anger control, anger management, <clears throat> stuff like that. But then study the Stoics. Um just consume uh, regular philosophy podcasts. Um, I also do history podcasts because it essentially is philosophy in action in the past. And what did we learn from it? And what we learned from our past is absolutely nothing because we love comedy. You know, like this time, my professor told me so. <laughs> so education in terms of intellectual uh, reward and I cannot emphasize you enough, cannot emphasize enough. Even though you have money, you could go to college. Okay, let me provide some mastery. If you wanted the camaraderie and people around you, maybe I could see you going to college. 
but you would not be going for the education. You would be going for the interaction with other people. All right. But when you think about the type of people who go and get advanced degrees or college degrees now, especially things that are intellectually stimulating or should be, these people are just rank leftists. They're not smart. They're not unique. There's not going to be any intellectual conversation. So I, I understand you'd have a compunction to go. Like I would say if you want that kind of intellectual stimulation, I go to a trade school. I really enjoyed uh, taking classes with all the younger people in computer networking. Cause it was fun, you know. I mean, we're learning stuff, and it was a challenge. And but you could you could kind of crack jokes a little bit because I was the older one, and people would laugh. Teacher was kind of cute too, and so uh, I mean, it was it was all right. So there's a little bit of. But if you're looking for a social reward, then I would I would be maybe joining fraternal orders and stuff like that. But <clears throat> for intellectual stimulation, it's almost guaranteed. If the best way to get intellectual stimulation is to not go to college, but to just get stuff for free. And you seem to be a, a, a person who you're introvert. You like to be on your own. So there's that. Now, another thing you could do. You need some kind of personal interaction. Maybe not you, maybe not introverts, but for people in general. Here again is where you have your fraternal orders and we have to go out into the real world. Now, in the olden times, we had social lives and people would get together, but because of the disease, um, the Democrats and the socialists and the Marxists and the communists and tyrants are going to make it that we never get to go out in public in person again. Um, also, nightclubs have died off. I don't know. Do people even have house parties anymore? Uh, and especially at your age at 40, you don't even be going to nightclubs or anything like that. And most of your friends are old or dead. And they could be alive, but they might as well be dead. They got to hang pot racks. If you don't know, look up my pot racks. Maybe I should just, for for reference sake, record my pot rack story. You call it my pot rack story, and I can reference it on YouTube. Like here's the pot rack story. You'll tune into that. <clears throat> um. So, uh, and I've already kind of investigated this a little bit with fraternal orders or, or social. Now it could be religion. That will scratch both itches. A philosophy. Um. But then also, uh, and if you believe in the afterlife, gosh, I'm real jealous of you. I really would like to believe in that, man. And then you could join a religion, like authentically join. Not like, oh, I'm a single mom of five or I killed people, but I got off and chill on a technicality. And I found Jesus and he forgives me of my horrible past. I'm a virgin again. No, no, no. I had fun with all those drug dealers and criminals and bad boys when I was younger. You have to wait. I, I'm not talking that church or that reason to join religion. You could authentically be a Christian, a Muslim, a Jew, a Buddhist, whatever. And there would be a community there. I mean, man, I'm half tempted to join Judaism, not because of my lineage, but there's a culture there. And every Jew I know, I'm like, well, did you go to synagogue? Like, Meh, not really. Like, well, how, what? So they play it like, oh yeah, we're more of a culture. Yeah. Synagogue, eh, hoy ve, hoy ve, maybe, I don't know. Maybe we go, maybe we don't, I don't know. Like, you know what percent of Israel? I thought, like, don't you all have to go to the, the, the synagogue? <clears throat> I just don't happen to believe. But if you can join some kind of social group, whether that is the fraternal order of the Elks, the Eagles, the International Organization of Oddfellows, the Youths, I would not join the Masons. I know a couple guys that joined the Masons and it's like, and we award you this award thing for being brother such and such with golden clusters and we bang our pots. But we bang our pots with the right hand on the left thing because that represents God in the church. Like, can we maybe go help some children recover from cancer? Uh, can we do anything but this? <laughs> it's so procedural. And we will lord our fellow brother the cross of the eternal farting. He is, he is past le level 72 of the farting cult. Let us all raise our arms and salute. I don't think they have a fraternal order of the farting cross at the Masons. But that's kind of what you can expect over there. <laughs> um, but just something to go hang out with people. I mean, honestly, if you can find it, I'd kill for a good poker game. I'd kill for a regular group of guys just playing some old poker. That'd be a grand old time. 
There is also meetup groups, but that's typically going to be younger people. There's nothing wrong with younger people. Just do they show up on time and regularly? So you might establish a rapport with them and maybe form some friends. No, they're gone. Oh, by the way, if you're also thinking of joining a meetup group, gentlemen, uh, to meet girls, don't even bother. <laughs> don't, don't bother. Just don't bother. Um, <clears throat> but a concerted effort and this will be for men or women, you will have to make a concerted effort to get out and participate in society in one way or another. And I would like for you to have that not be education or work, okay? Get out of college, get out of school, get out of the office, and go have fun with normal people. <laughs> what dwindling percentage there is. So there's that. Um, you can teach. You say, what? Yes, because you have real world experience. The problem with teaching, I would not say go get your degree in education. Do not get your, your um, license. I, if you can avoid it, do not teach in the public schools. I mean, you could substitute teach, but I, I wouldn't. Or if you're going to substitute teach, only substitute teach like juniors and seniors or kindergartners and first graders because the kindergartners and first graders are a bag of fun, man. They are so fun and you can lie to them and they'll believe any trick you pull on them. Juniors and seniors, all right, assuming it's a good school and not some trash school where it's just a big babysitting operation as those kids just merely stop at school as a formality on their way to jail, all right? Uh, but, like, you teach AP classes, then those kids are a little bit more mature and adult, and that could kind of be rewarding. But you, you don't want to become a full-time teacher that. If you could become a professor of some kind at night school or even community education, Something, you know, where it's not serious. There's no credits really required. It's just people want to be there. So it could be accredited, but you don't teach during the daytime. You teach at night where the adults are. You don't teach where all the suburb spoiled brat kids come in like, I'm going to save the world. Like, oh, God. We heard you said fart in a class. Yeah, I, I did say fart in a class. Well, according to our rules, you can't, but I can say transsexual diddly kidders. What, what, I could say that. Well, that's fine. So if you want to avoid all that, just teach at night school or community ed or some kind of local thing. <clears throat> um, there you go. Um, and that, that allows you to pass on whatever your knowledge and wisdom is to other people, help them out a little bit. So there's that. Uh, traveling. Not like, I like to travel. Not that travel. Not like, oh, you went to Paris and you saw the Eiffel Tower and the Leaning Tower of Pisa and you did the thing holding a gun. But see, I did the visual. Of this. It looks like I'm holding up the Leaning Tower. <laughs> like you go on a cross world motorcycle ride you go to some obscure country no one has gone to you go climb a mountain you go adventure and all that traveling alone could easily eat up 10 years of your life and it's new and it's different and since you work remotely you could do it from anywhere in the world and you might even find a place you'd like to live because the state you're in now again it's not the worst but it's like no one says yeah let's go to that state for summer vacation like, oh, eh. What's it like? Eh, it's like that. Yeah, I could see it being like that. It is the state that's like that. I know the state you're talking about. I've been there. What was it like? It was like that. So <clears throat> um, you have free reign individually. But for everybody else, one, get a job or a skill where you can work remotely. And then two, get the F out of here and go travel. Like if it was up to me, and it kind of is up to me, I would never see snow again. I keep trying, but it snows early or late in the season. <clears throat> um, so traveling would do that. Then some also kind of adventuring. One might consider this traveling, but I'm, I'm also saying adventure. Like I want to do the Whitewater Rapids all the way from Rock Springs, Wyoming, down to Las Vegas, which is the Green River, Colorado River combination. Uh, there's several other major hikes I want to do. Um that adventure, a motorcycle rides, whatever that adventure is. I don't know what your adventures are. Maybe you maybe you want to sail across the Pacific in a catamaran. Uh, go ahead, do it, do that. And there's training, there's prepping. That takes like years to get ready to do. Uh, that's what I would do. I mean, so that that will also eat up arguably a decade of your life. Um, 
Then there's other stuff. I mean, these aren't life purposes, but good habits to get into to maintain your physical and mental health. Good diet, getting good exercise, regular exercise, regular diet, gym membership. Um, I would also say along that some kind of hobbies that aren't like epic, you know, hiking Mount Everest, you know, like little things you can do. Some kind of crafts. Like I got lapidary. I cut and polish stones in my garage. Make little pretty things. Give it to the little lonely. There you go. Yeah. You think that's valuable, but it isn't. But your uncle gave it to you and you love it so much. There it is. Got to make you happy, kid. <clears throat> um, But a good regimen, I guess, for lack of a better, you know, like, boo, I do this and I do this. And, you know, maybe in volunteer, like legitimate charity. Don't help out the poor. The poor are poor for a reason. Help out the kids. Help out the kids. Screw the poor. Poor deserves being poor. Oh, you're a heroin addict? Too bad for you. Hey, maybe some more fentanyl and pass some $20 bills. That'll make a great life. Um, But like if there's little kids that need help, obviously. Coaching, not life coaching, like coach sports. That'd help. That, that would help out. That'd be good. That'd be good. But just get out a little bit and do that. Um, and then I guess you also need your fun hobbies. So hobbies are going to be a, a key thing. So ballroom dancing, um, painting, writing, something that's fun or you enjoy and get out and you go do it. Uh, not so much the adventure. I mean, is motorcycle riding a hobby? Yes, but I'd, I'd, th I'd say that's more in the adventure group. Uh, I like that. Um, another thing, no ruining, no regretting. That's where everybody screws this up. I did a video before about like either lose weight or don't date or whatever we called it. <clears throat> and the argument I made was, look, if you just know you're not going to lose the weight, then at least forgive yourself um, the guilt or the shame or the obligation of pursuing the opposite sex. And this goes for both men and women. If you want to live a life without women and ladies, you want to live a life without men, then don't rue or regret or, or torment yourself over that opportunity cost celebrate like let me show you like let's say i was a girl and i just didn't want to date men man or girls say, icky i don't need no man i got i got my career or my government check or both or whatever all right and you got a fulfilling life right um i wouldn't bother putting on makeup i wouldn't grow my hair out long i'd, I'd go do what i wanted to every day because you are free from the obligations to impress that other side of society and men it's the same thing i would argue you should go hiking and get some cardio and lift weights or practice martial arts or whatever for your own sake. It's good for your body. It's good for your mentality. Exercise is just good regardless of uh, absent the opposite sex. But then I wouldn't wear like, Oh, do I go on dating profile? Oh, I really, Nope. <laughs> you're just, you're just free as a bird. And that's, that's easier said than done. Um, you know, like you take a look at uh, TFM. Um, he, he seems very content, very relaxed, very happy because he truly has walked away. He doesn't, he doesn't hem and haw about it anymore, except on the podcast, which people demand of him to do, <clears throat> but it's kind of like giving up on a career. Like, nope, I'm done giving up on an ex. Nope, I'm done. And then having that freedom to walk away and not worry about it anymore, not to be tormented over it. So if you are going to do that, one of the key things, and this isn't a goal or an objective or what you do in life, this is basically how you don't, not a cat, not a millicalorie, not a nanocalorie or a microcalorie of effort or energy should be worried about the choice you made. You made it. Don't worry about it. Go have your fun. And I know another guy, I can't mention who he is, but he's always been this way. Like, no, no marriage. This is like back in the mid to late nineties. I met this guy and he was like, nope. And then lunch, like, no, no, like, no, no, no. I, I've seen it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. And his old man was just constantly harangued and harassed by his mother, as was he. And he's like, nope, I want nothing to do with it. And I got older and I've seen him like, holy cow, he was right. And he was right back in his thirties. That's all. This guy was way ahead of the crew. Um, but his life is so peaceful and content, so relaxing, so calm, because he, he didn't, one, there were no women in his life. Two, he didn't harangue himself. I got another guy I know who, oh, kick the ump, no, I don't need him. But that's all he does is, is rue over women 
than the lost opposite sex. So whether you're a guy or a gal, if you don't want the other one, you don't want the opposite sex, do that and at least do yourself the favor of not worrying about it for the rest of your life. Go eat. Don't put on your makeup. Don't go to the gym if you don't want to. Um, direct decorate the house however you want. Buy whatever crappy car you want. You know, go live your life. You are truly free from any obligations to individual societies, individual sexes, or society altogether. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, man, I'm just trying to think what else is, I'd recommend getting a good vice like tobacco or, or booze or wine, you know, a scotch or a wine, not to become a drunk or to get lung cancer, but find yourself a good vice. Um, BDSM. It's another thing like Vince, that's his vice. Gets into BDSM and is very clear with the girls. I'm not your boyfriend. You're not my girlfriend. We're not living together. I will never marry you. I'm here for sexual pleasure only. If that's fine, stick around. If not, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, but it, whether that's that, I, I would strongly recommend not doing drugs, hard drugs anyway. Um, Ice cream, food, you know, what, whatever vice you want, go do it, man. Have some kind of vice, you know, a little bit of spice in your life. Uh, and then, um, and then, uh, beyond that, I would say one final thing <clears throat> is to leave a work of art of some kind, a legacy. It doesn't have to be artistic like music or sculpture, but you should be, leave something behind that when you die, you weren't just some rando hermit guy living in the woods. It could be something as simple as writing a book and have a time capsule on it and wait for it to publish like a hundred years after you die. Um, it could be, oh, he made this nice little, I don't know, piece of art, um, something you started a business, something. I don't know what it is. Whatever you want to leave the earth with. Uh, so you, you, you're about to pass away and you leave to the world. You know, it, you know, it could be as something as simple as a donation to the public library. Uh, or leaving, you're, you're gonna have you're gonna have estate planning issues too. I mean, you have no heir apparent. Uh, you you may be a perfect candidate. Here's one thing that I'm gonna have to do, and a lot of bachelors and bachelorettes are gonna have to do this. You don't have any heirs, you don't have any children. <clears throat> what do you do with all that money? And so you got to leave it somewhere. And so I think I may start um uh, uh, the vasectomy fund, help young men or old men get vasectomies so they don't ruin their lives with kids they can't afford. And I've gotten more people out of poverty than the Democrat Party ever did because the Democrat Party hasn't gotten one person out of poverty yet. I wish it was funny. It's not. It's actually tragic what the Democrats have done to you people. But you, you free money, okay? Why am I poor? Um, but you, that right there would take several years for you to figure out what you're going to do with your cash. Like be it setting up a trust, um, setting up a, a 503C, a, a, a charity organization, or just donating it somewhere, making sure it goes to the right place. Uh, if you want to help out Thor and Missy, they could use some help. Uh, she's recovering from uh, being paralyzed, essentially spinal, big spinal cord injury. Um, Atham could use some tuition money so he could eat. <laughs> so he's not, not dying of sleep deprivation. Uh, but there's a lot of legitimate people that need a, a charity. Maybe you're not, ready to donate to charity now, but when you're 75 and your dad lived to 78 and you're sitting on 8.7 mil, you're like, well, I'm not going to spend through this. What am I going to do with it? But in your case, you could go travel the world in luxury. If I were you, I I'd definitely spend it on yourself. I'm not saying donate all that home. No, no, don't, no, no, don't donate any money to charity. It's usually not a good idea. You spend the most of it on yourself, but if there's some left over, you may want to think about, ah, oh, okay, while I'm alive, I better make sure it goes to the right place. Otherwise, the state's going to get your money. So um, that's that's what I would do there too. And lay same thing, you know, <clears throat> whatever Marxist leftist feminist cause you want to donate your money to to make sure everyone is as miserable as you were, you know. The spinsterfund.org, making sure girls don't fall in love or get married or be hot. Be miserable like me. You don't need a man.org. Donate now. Cats and wine and dildos.org. We'll get women a box of wine, a set of dildos, and a bunch of cats for all women who can't afford them. <laughs> so funny. So there you go. All right. 
let's get through the super chats real quick. And then I got to go. <clears throat> scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep it. I'll have to be fast because I do have to get to another place. Uh, Dad teaches and words to my son. $10 saw the title. A life without women is pretty cool. Less to do. More projects completed. Well, there's a world of women giving themselves away for free. So effing is easy. Uh, yeah. It's kind of true. Oh, another thing, I would just just go seeking arrangement or go go pay for it just to to scratch that itch. Um, don't don't really bother with the with the wooing or the courtship. Nonstop Dre three sixty two bucks. Cappy's pastime is being a life coach and internet dad. I'll take internet dad, but more like internet older brother. Uh, but I am not a life coach. I, I, uh... I don't know if you could be a life coach if you had like a real job in the past and supported yourself. Uh, Cappy, a, a nonstop trade for two bucks. Cappy's a member of international dog beaters. Yep. Yep. Competent man, two bucks. Have fun with normal people. Are there any left? No, it, it, it really is. I, I'm about to write a piece and I argue that everyone should live in the real world, but I'm going to write a piece that makes the argument that you should live in a digital world as well. There's nothing wrong with you living part-time in a digital world. Um, because the, the real world is so pathetic right now. Nonstop Dre, two bucks. Why Cappy hates snow reminds him of Santa's shop. <laughs> ah, ah, I see. I see. Oh, oh, he's so funny. Competent man, 10 bucks. The vast majority of all of the normies all seem to be a bundle of neuroses come up with all kinds of not navel gazing for the stuff they do and can't get anything done. I marvel at how they go to work. Yeah, they people are just cowards. They don't want to anything that's hard they don't want to do. <clears throat> they don't want to do it. I saw somewhere like 1 in 5 or 1 in 4 Gen Zers think that you can actually have a relationship on like a digital dating relationship. Like okay. Uh Netrima, uh 15 uh shekels. Go on adventure, good advice, experiences like that make life worth living. Traveling widens the mind and feeds the soul. Yeah, yeah, it does. Oh, dude, when I found fossils, it's awesome. Like, oh, how long ago was this here? You know, wow, 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 look at this thing. This creature crawled all the way and then it died. And it's here now, millions of years later. <clears throat> the techie that forgot time, $5 cap. I definitely recommend deep sea fishing. Okay, I go off the east coast of Florida where you don't have to travel out too many miles to catch a yellowfin. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, Rolo does that. He enjoys that very much when he goes, hangs out with the Miami crew. I mean, there's anything, fossil hunting, uh, deep sea fishing, uh, building classic cars. Uh, there's so much fun stuff to do. Now that I got a garage, I can I can actually kind of do this stuff. The 1995 Stoic, uh, $10. New guy, thank you. Uh, why keep asking this question? It's a choice you either adapt to current women or stop dealing with them. There are no loopholes around it. Enjoy your life and make the best of it. Yeah, I think, and he's already concluded that part, Stoic. He's just like, okay, what's on the menu? And I'm telling him what's on the menu, which is everything. I've just found these to be particularly rewarding uh, in terms of activities that don't require other people. <clears throat> boo, 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 boo. db buster five bucks yo cappy i just got out of a five-year relationship and i want to get back into dating i'm five seven hundred seventy pounds 28 years old living in california make around 35k any advice don't even try you're overweight you're short and you're in california you don't make any money I would clean up your, not, not that you got to clean up your act, like get off drugs or not commit crime. You need to lose weight. You need to get a job. You need to make more money, especially for living in California. And, and you need to get some kind of career profession because at 35 K you you don't have a profession. You don't have any kind of career. And I would put girls on the back burner. Um, no, you're not, you're not getting back into dating. That's like in you know the World War II video game. Some old 1898 Spanish Civil War vet comes up with his old outdated. I want to go fight the Nazis. Listen, Grandpa, you are in no condition. You're just going to get butchered. Sit down. Uh, Nonstop trade, two bucks. Cappy's money and books are going to the Carlson School. God Almighty, I hope, I hope they never use my name. I hope they never use my name. Ryan Annis, 10 bucks. Go fishing for big fish. The bigger, the better. Spend an hour plus catching a marlin bigger than you. It's an amazing feeling. Yeah. Or hunting. Hunting is another thing I might want to get into. I'm uh, probably going to have to learn. 
Uh, competent man, two bucks. Guy in cash, what should I do? Hookers and blow? I, look, I'm not, uh, I don't know about the blow, but yeah, pay for female company. Because you don't want it, but you may want it at a time. And you're just got other stuff going on. And that's the way it's going. That's the way it's going. Mar I said, I got documented proof months ago. I said, the seeking arrangement type of sites are the future of dating in more ways than one. <clears throat> Ladies, the same thing for you. You can you can pay guys. Oh, that's right. You girls don't like sex. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We don't like sex. We like sex, just not with you. Yeah, I got I got the turn. Way ahead of you. Way ahead of you. Uh, that was a funny one. There you go. Okay, questions, answers. Oh, I forgot. We had a missed super chat. Let me pull it up here. Um, Robin James from a couple videos ago for five bucks. Truly rich people buy actual mansions. Uh, yeah, real mansions. Yeah. But I also know truly rich people who you they live in a bungalow. <laughs> a bungalow. Oh, Erica. Erica Shanta Williams. You can find her at Erica's Classy Climb. She is basically uh, a sister version of me and helps out the ladies uh, because life is about people. That's why you get this question all the time. Just came back from the gym because health and relationships. All right, there you go, sweetheart. There you go. She's she's a di she's a different type of gal. She's a different breed, man. You go. She's she is definitely a classy. Cl that's it's just we still have to meet Erica. I got to come down to Tejas. And we got to like have some food or chill out or something but yeah erica's definitely uh there's someone you could have an interesting conversation with there's someone you will not be bored with speaking of the existential uh self-actualization video we did before all right there we go see you guys later toodles